Welcome back to my channel. And if you are visiting this channel for the first time, you are also highly welcome. In this lecture, we'll be looking at follicular genesis. We'll be looking at the hormonal basis behind the process of follicular genesis and also the structural modifications that come with it. Genesis is a developmental process that leads to the maturation of an ovarian follicle. So we have ovarian follicle at the primordial stage, which is the embryonic derived ovarian follicle. And this, of course, undergo a process that is referred to as follicular genesis to become the mature ovarian follicle. So using this image by the side, this is where we have the primordial ovarian follicle. And this is the configuration of the primordial ovarian follicle. And this undergo developmental process where it will become transformed into a mature ovarian follicle, which is shown here in this image. But before we drive in into the structural modification that the primordial ovarian follicle will undergo before they will finally be transformed into a mature ovarian follicle, it's good for us to establish the hormonal stimulation behind this process. So this slide will be looking at the endocrine regulation of follicular genesis. Follicular genesis is not seen to just occur, which means that the transformation of the primordial ovarian follicle does not just become transformed into a mature ovarian follicle. There is an established endocrine regulated process that must occur before this process will be initiated. We have the primordial ovarian follicle developing into the mature ovarian follicle under a regulated hormonal event. The root of this hormonal regulatory processes is the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone. This gonadotropin releasing hormone is produced by the hypothalamus, which of course will have a consequential effect on the pituitary gland, specifically the anterior pituitary gland, where it will be stimulated to produce gonadotropins. These gonadotropins are basically follicle stimulants stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. It is these two hormones that we then target the ovary to stimulate the process of follicular genesis. Let's try to represent this with this image by the side. Let's say this is where we have the hypothalamus highlighted in pink. And we know that the pituitary gland, which is highlighted here in blue, is located close to the hypothalamus, specifically anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. So we have the hypothalamus secreting the gonadotropin releasing hormone. This gonadotropin releasing hormone exact the function of stimulating the pituitary gland to release gonadotropins. If you drive in deep into this name, you see that it is a hormone that is responsible for releasing gonadotropin. And that is why it is so referred to as gonadotropin releasing hormone. So this hormone is released via the bloodstream and the target is to stimulate the anterior pituitary gland to release follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. The follicle stimulating hormone and Luteinizing hormone are gonadotropins. And this is also released via the bloodstream by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland where it targets the ovary. In the ovary, these hormones will be delivered to the ovary via the bloodstream. And this is where they begin to stimulate the process of follicular genesis. If you look at the follicle stimulating hormone, also driving in into this name, it is a hormone that is responsible for stimulating follicular development. And that is why it is so referred to as a follicle stimulating hormone. And the luteinizing hormone, of course, if you drive in also into this name, it is the hormone that is responsible for luteinization. So these two hormones will target the ovary where they will stimulate the primordial ovarian follicle, which is an embryonic developed follicle to begin to mature and develop. And this primordial ovarian follicle will be transformed into the tertiary of the mature ovarian follicle. At this stage, the follicle is mature and of course is ready to release the mature egg. And this is what is shown here in this region here that is harrowed in brown. So you have the release of the mature egg that, of course, is fertilizable. So that is how the process goes. So we are going to be focusing on the structural modification that is stimulated by this hormone from the primordial ovarian stage, finally to the mature ovarian stage. And of course, this is what is seen to be termed as follicular genesis. 
So we know that the ovarian follicle basically is the egg or the ovum that is surrounded by the follicular cells. These follicular cells are the supporting system and these follicular cells also are responsible for nourishing and also delivering the gonadotropin releasing hormone to the developing ovarian follicle so as to continuously grow and also develop. So we have the eucyte and the EPA cells, which are the follicular cells, of course, undergoing some form of growth and development. And they do this under the process of folliculogenesis. Process occurs in four stages. And we'll be highlighting the four stages as we go through with this lecture. And each stage of development is given different names. So let's go to the initial stage of ovarian follicle, which is the primordial ovarian follicle. And this is the configuration of the primordial ovarian follicle. We have the eucytes here. The eucytes at this stage of development is a primary eucyte. And you have the egg or the eucyte also surrounded by a single layer of flat cells that is harrowed here in brown. So you have the primary eucyte surrounded by a single layer of flat cell. This is the structural configuration of the primordial ovarian follicle. This is what it looks like. And this stage of course is derived during the embryonic process. This is what the ovary is bet with. So at the point of bed, so this is the type of ovarian follicle that is seen within the ovary. And this, of course, remains at this stage within the ovary until when puberty is reached. This EU site, that is time the primary EU site, is arrested at the prophase of the first meiotic division. So this EU site will remain at the prophase of the first meiotic division until puberty. At the point of puberty, the primordial ovarian follicle will then be stimulated to begin to grow and also develop. And of course, this is under the secretion of the gonadotropin releasing hormone by the hypothalamus, which will also stimulate the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland to secrete gonadotropins, which finally exerts its effect on the ovary to begin to stimulate the process of follicular genesis. This we've tried to highlight in our previous slide. So at puberty, there's going to be the initiation of folliculogenesis. Remember that this egg is arrested at the process of the first meiotic division. Of course, this needs to be completed and it will definitely be completed during the course of development. So let's watch out for this. During puberty, this primordial ovarian follicle will be stimulated and be transformed into the primary ovarian follicle. This primary ovarian follicle has an early stage and also the late stage. So this is the configuration of the early stage of the primary ovarian follicle. You see the EU site here arrowed in brown. And this EU site is then surrounded by a single layer of cuboidal cells. Remember in the primordial ovarian follicle, we have a single layer of flat cells. These flat cells are then transformed into cuboidal type of cell. And this is why you have the EU site, specifically now the primary EU site being surrounded by a single layer of cuboidal cell. You can see a form of transformation here between the primordial ovarian follicle and also the early stage of the primary ovarian follicle. After the early stage of the primary ovarian follicle, due to continuous proliferation, of the granulosa cells, which are the single layer of cuboidal cell between the developing primary EU site and also the single layer of cuboidal epithelium. You have the deposit of a glycoprotein coat, and this is what is harrowed here in green. You see glycoprotein deposits that is secreted by the developing primary eucyte and also the surrounding granulosa cell, which is the single layer of cuboidal cell. They begin to secrete this glycoprotein, and this glycoprotein will then be sandwiched between the developing primary eucyte and also the granulosa cell, and this is what is harrowed here in green. These glycoprotein coats will finally be transformed into the eggshell. You can see the kind of transformation that occur between the primordial ovarian follicle and also the primary ovarian follicle, specifically the early stage of the primary ovarian follicle. So due to continuous proliferation of the granulosa cell, we are going to have the transformation of the early stage of the primary ovarian follicle into the late stage of the primary ovarian follicle. And this is the kind of configuration that will be seen. So you have the EU site here arrowed at the center. We know that the EU site here is at the primary stage and of course is referred to as the primary EU site. And surrounding it, we have 
multiple layers of granulosa cells. Remember, in the early stage of the primary ovarian follicle, we have just a single layer of cuboidal cells. Why in the late stage of the primary ovarian follicle, we then have multiple layers of cuboidal cells, which are the granulosa cells. So this is termed the late stage of the primary ovarian follicle. It can also be referred to as the multilaminar primary ovarian follicle because of the multiple layer that is seen. And also because of this, the early stage of the primary ovarian follicle can also be referred to as the unilaminal primary ovarian follicle because it is seen with a single layer of cuboidal cells. So you can see how these names are also being drafted. So for the late stage of the primary ovarian follicle, we have multiple layers of granulosa cells. And this is as a result of continuous proliferation of the single layer that is seen in the early stage of the primary ovarian follicle under the stimulation of follicle stimulating hormone. So this is what is seen to be harrowed here in black. And remember we have the glycoprotein coat that is also harrowed in green. There's going to be continuous deposition of this glycoprotein substance. We said that this will be transformed into the eggshell. So this is also seen in the late primary ovarian follicle. Of course, it seems to be more pronounced because of the continuous deposit of these glycoprotein coats. Then the last structure that is seen in the late primary ovarian follicle is the recruitment of the outer stroma cells. And this is what is harrowed here in purple. We see that the outer stroma cells are now being recruited and you see them surrounding the granulosa cell. Remember, we have the granulosa cells here surrounding the EU site and surrounding the granulosa cell we then have Teca cells and this is what is highlighted here in black surrounding the granulosa cell. After the developing the ovarian follicle assumed the late primary follicular stage is going to be transformed and developed into the secondary ovarian follicle and this, this is the structural configuration of the secondary ovarian follicle. Remember that in the late primary ovarian follicle we have multiple layers layers of granulosa cells. So at this stage, the EU site is referred to as the secondary EU site. And it is referred to as the secondary EU site because it has now assumed the secondary stage of egg development. And what you see here, you have the applied number of chromosomes, then you have the formation of the first polar body. At this stage, the primary EU site has completed the first meiotic division. If you go back to the primordial ovarian follicle, remember we established that the primordial the ovarian follicle is arrested at the process of the first meiotic division. So as it continuously develops until when it gets to the secondary follicular stage, it is going to be completing the first meiotic division. And that is why you have the formation of the secondary eocyte because the primary eocyte has completed its division. So it's now being transformed into the secondary eocyte with an haploid number of chromosomes and also the formation of the first polar body. And this is what is seen in the configuration of the secondary eocyte here. So up to this level, at the primordial and the primary ovarian follicle, the eocyte is referred to as the primary eocyte. Until when it gets to the secondary follicular stage, that it will then be referred to as the secondary eocyte. So we have the secondary eocyte here, also being surrounded by multiple layers of granulosa cells. But the multiple layers of granulosa cells are then seen with fluid field spaces within them. And this is what is harrowed here in black. So you have a number of spaces created within the granulosa cells at the secondary follicular stage. And these spaces are fluid field spaces that is secreted by the granulosa cells and also the recruited outer teca cells created to nourish the developing eocyte. So you have nutrients being collected from these two groups of cells and of course are being delivered into these fluid spaces to nourish the developing egg. So this is the kind of configuration that is seen by the granulosa cell. If you go back to the late primary ovarian follicle, you see that there are no spaces created within the granulosa cell. But for the secondary ovarian follicular stage, the spaces are created and these spaces are filled with fluid. And we also have the glycoprotein deposit. Remember, we always have this glycoprotein deposit from the primary follicular stage. But because of the continuous deposit, there's going to be an increased thickness of this glycoprotein deposit because of its continuous deposit. And we said that this will finally be transformed into the eggshell, which will be referred to as the zonal pellucida.
Then finally, we have the outer tecker cells that are recruited from the surrounding stroma cells. And this is what is also highlighted in black. And at this stage of the secondary follicular stage, you see that they begin to rearrange themselves into layers. So this is the kind of configuration that we see that is presented by the secondary ovarian follicle. This will then be transformed to the final mature stage, which is referred to as the mature or the graphian follicle. And this is the structural configuration of the mature ovarian follicle. So we still see the secondary eucytes. Remember the secondary eucytes now has the applied number of chromosomes with the first polar body. This is the configuration that is seen. We say that this will continuously develop, but at the mature follicular stage, there is going to be another arrest. And this arrest, since it is in the second meiotic division, is going to be arrested in the metaphase of the second meiotic division. So we have at this stage, the EU site being referred to as the secondary EU site, but will now be arrested again at the metaphase of the second meiotic division. So this is the kind of presentation that is seen around the growth and development of the EU site. Then we have the surrounding granulosa cells now having a single fluid filled space that is referred to as the antrium. And this is what is seen here to be harrowed in black. Remember in the secondary follicular stage, we have small spaces that are created. This small spaces will then coalesce to form a single fluid field unit that is referred to as the antrium. And this is what is seen to be arrowed here in black. Because of the formation of the single fluid field antrium, you then have the granulosa cells being positioned around specific regions of the developing ovarian follicle. So you have a group of granulosa cells seen to surround the developing egg. And this is what is harrowed here at this point. And this is referred to as the corona radiata cells. Then you have another group that is seen to form the border of the developing ovarian follicle. And this is what is seen to be also be harrowed here at this region. And this is referred to as the membrana granulosa. Then you have the third group of granulosa cells linking the corona radiata cells with the membrana granulosa cells. And this is what is also seen to be harrowed here in this image. And this is referred to as the cumulus ophorus. At the mature ovarian follicular stage, you have the full maturity of the zona pellucida, which is referred to as the eggshell. And this is what is seen here to be arrowed in green. It's finally transformed into the eggshell. Then finally, you have the tecker cells here, highlighted in black on the outside, surrounding the granulosa cells, you see them being arranged into layers. So you have the teca interna that is harrowed here in purple, of course, located on the inside. And more external to the teca interna, you have the teca externa that is also harrowed here in purple. So this is the configuration of the mature ovarian follicle. And if you look at the structural modification from going back to the primordial ovarian follicle and up here with a single layer of flat cell being transformed into the mature ovarian follicle that is seen with a number of modifications. So thanks for watching this video. Let's continue to stay glued to this channel.